Welcome to the Proactive Security Podcast with Mike Hodges and Brian Hamilton. This podcast is dedicated to discussing violence prevention in healthcare. We want to inform, equip, and empower healthcare security leaders to prevent violence before it happens. And now, here's your hosts, Mike and Brian. Hey, everybody, I'm Mike. And I'm Brian. And this is episode 13 of the Proactive Security Podcast. This is, uh, this is our birthday episode, right, Brian? That is. It's been uh, one year since we launched the podcast. That's a ridiculous thing to consider. One whole year uh, of, uh, of the Proactive Security Podcast. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it seemed like the year went by really fast. Uh, you know, as much as uh, we, we've been able to have some really interesting discussions with interesting people. And, you know, we, we've uploaded uh, the first few episodes were just us. When, you know, when I look back at those original those original six before we had our first guest on, you know, and, uh, and then, yeah, we've, we've had some, we've had some, uh, we've, we've had some pretty, we've had a pretty eventful year of doing the proactive security podcast. We really have. I think, you know, I I think it took us that first six episodes. So about six months uh, just to, just to be comfortable talking to each other before we could invite in somebody else. You know, we had to, we had to, we had to let the, the relationship blossom so that we could allow in, other people to participate, but, uh, but no, man, it's been exciting. We've, uh, we've talked about a, we've covered a lot of ground in a year, uh, which is super exciting. Um, even when it was just us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, yeah, that was one of the things that kind of stuck out for me was when we actually finally brought on our first guest, because we, again, we, we just kind of decided we were going to do this and we were going to talk about workplace violence prevention and just really try to offer some tools to help the the leaders who are you know who are trying to address these challenges but we we didn't really think too far in advance you know we we recorded a few episodes and started releasing them and then yeah we we decided hey let's let's get some other folks on here and we were um, we were fortunate enough to have Ryan King join us for that first episode with a guest back in March see you're giving away too many uh you're giving them too many you know you know behind the scenes uh <laughs> tips there to the audience because you know i've i've always said that we've been extremely regimented and organized and strategic in our approach to this podcast not at all uh fly by the seat of our pants <laughs> <laughs> all right well that, that being said i'll edit that last part out <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the beauty of a podcast you can always you can always edit it out um but well you know i was i'll be honest with you i was a little nervous uh bringing in guests um and wondering how that was going to go, but man, Ryan kicked us off uh, phenomenally when we brought him in um, to talk about, uh, to talk about some different things. But I think, you know, as much as I enjoyed our conversations, you know, having him uh, come in and talk about de-escalation and share his experience and really, it really did just enrich the program. And that's just continued to build, I think, as we brought in other people to talk about workplace violence and, as you and I both stated early on, I think in probably in episode one or, you know, as we waxed philosophical about how we were going to put this thing together, our goal was to highlight best practices in the industry. And, and as we've been able to bring people in, that's really uh, been uh, uh, something we've been able to do, which I've been excited about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we, we've covered it. Like you said, we covered a lot of ground and you know, I think we've been able to meet some interesting people, which is always one of the benefits of doing a podcast. Uh, you know, we, we had a connection with our, actually our second guest was uh, Sarah Marie Baumgartner. And I understand that, you know, there's been some additional collaboration on, on both of our friends with her. Uh, I know she's been on one of my other podcasts as well. And, and you guys are doing some work together as well, right? Yeah. You know, it, it, Sarah Marie was really an interesting guest because it, it didn't really occur to me to pursue the domestic violence angle or the intimate partner violence angle um, in one of our episodes, but she, uh, she brought just a, a tremendous wealth of information, especially from a healthcare perspective, being a nurse. And so, so being able to chat with her and, um, and, and yeah, she's just a phenomenal voice uh, and advocate for uh, women and for domestic violence. And um, there's been tremendous collaboration post that, uh, post that discussion. And I know there will continue to be collaboration uh, because uh, she's awesome to work with. 
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, just a, just an interesting approach too. Like when she had first reached out to me on LinkedIn, I just found it intriguing that she was a nurse who had a, this interest in security and then doing the deeper dive and hearing her story. So, you know, what, what I'm really trying to do here is to sell anybody who hasn't listened to that episode yet to go back and listen to it. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was episode eight. Uh, for those of you that are keeping track at home, um, <laughs> we'll be happy to post a link in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there one interview that kind of specifically stuck out for you as uh, you know, one that maybe got you really excited or one that was kind of a difficult one to land? Because I know, like, again, when we talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff, there's a lot of coordination that goes on. You know, really, it's a, a little bit unique for us, because normally when I'm when I'm doing my podcast, I just have to really focus on my schedule and when I can fit people in. But, you know, for us, we, we have to make sure it works for both of us. And then whatever guest or guests we have on. Well, it's a good thing that neither one of us have difficult or challenging schedules. I mean, <laughs> just, you know, you know uh, that's, that's, a, that's a little behind the scenes. That's, but I, to address your original question there, which is a, a nice toss up for me. I, I mean, if there's an interview that stands out, it's going to be Fred Burton, um, the executive director of the Ontic Center for Protective Intelligence, because um, uh, of our guests and, 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 Ryan, Sarah Marie, uh, Connor, if you're listening, sorry, guys. Fred was my favorite, uh, only in so much as uh, my inner fanboy came out just based <laughs> on um, the work that he's done and, and, and um, uh, you know, his, his history and perspective and, and just how much of a nerd that I am on the inside, especially when it comes to protective intelligence. So uh, <laughs> that definitely, um, definitely you got to see my, uh, my inner geek uh, as, uh, as we shared some time with Fred Burton, uh, which was a, a phenomenal discussion. Yeah. And I remember actually that was an interesting one because it was actually on your birthday. And uh, when we were, when we were getting ready to interview him, you had, uh, you gave me a call because he, you were stuck in some traffic that was unanticipated. So you didn't have to share that part, Brian, you didn't have to tell people about that part. Oh, don't, yeah. don't worry. It'll, it'll, it'll get better as we go on. There's lots of, <laughs> don't worry. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw myself into this when we get to, uh, when we get to the most recent episode. <laughs> but... If you want to, if you want to talk about, you know, Mike Hodges white knuckling the steering wheel of his truck, trying to get through Atlanta traffic. So I could get to a place to jump on this scheduled interview that we had with um, Fred. And of course he, he, and, and you were both gracious to the fact that I was a few minutes late but I was coming in on two wheels, man. I was, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> my, uh, my challenges with, uh, with traffic were significant on that day. No, <laughs> absolutely. No, I just remember how excited you were. And I remember when you called me to tell me you were late, I was like, Oh man, I, I, I could hear the, the disappointment in your voice. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was not, I, I was not happy. That was, uh, uh, and, and, you know, just some real behind the scenes. That was my 40th birthday. So it was just hard all over. <laughs> uh, oh, man. And then, um, you know, one of the other ones that kind of stick out is the one we did immediately after that, that for me, uh, and when we had Nathan Meehan and, and Peter Forth on, I, I thought that they, you know, they gave some really great information. Um, you know, they, they gave uh, away the opportunity to take some of their courses, but that was, it was a great conversation. And, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, they were just two pretty good dudes. I really enjoyed talking to them. Yeah. And, you know, I was really, um, I was interested in the work that they were doing beforehand, but I had not gotten the chance to chat with them the way we did during the interview. And, and they really did present some unique and interesting ideas around the idea of active threat assessment. And something that I think from a training perspective, if you have a program uh, where you're deploying officers in an environment, especially a healthcare environment, can add tremendous value because that active threat component and your ability to assess in real time and then not only assess, but articulate the why behind your assessment, uh, which is what really, really I was interested in in our discussions with them, uh, was fantastic. And Nathan in and of himself um, has a tremendous background, um, just given his... Um, credentials and and the work that he's done with the department of justice and some other things and just that was a fascinating discussion oh, absolutely it was but i think even more fascinating 
no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm setting this up. I'm giving this way too much credit than it deserves. But that we followed that up by uh, doing another a vintage episode with with just the two of us. It was a throwback, <laughs> yeah, and that throwback. had absolute that had absolutely nothing to do with our inability to get a guest. <laughs> 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 that, had, that had absolutely nothing to do with us waiting too late to try to con somebody into getting on the podcast recording at the last minute yeah <laughs> uh, we'll just spill all the secrets yeah well you know what i think I, I said i would throw myself under the bus for um for the last episode episode 12 which we had we had connor samuels who was gracious enough to you know while he was while he was not feeling well uh, get together with us I think two days before the episode was scheduled to be released. So April or sorry, August 13th, which is actually the day after my anniversary. So I was actually already on vacation. I was, I was in Niagara Falls when we actually recorded the episode again, Connor wasn't really feeling well at all. Uh, so we, so, you know, we appreciate him going to the, going to the, that length to, uh, to come in and speak with us. And then, you know, as we were on vacation, I just completely forgot to upload the episode. And <laughs> went into a week of vacation after that. And uh, so the episode got released a, a little bit late, uh, you know, actually nine days late. So, so that was, that was who's all. Ca- who's counting, Brian? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, so, you know, Mike got caught in traffic one day, you know, it, it is what it is. I just forgot to release an episode and, <laughs> and went on vacation and didn't, didn't have my computer with me to, to do all the editing and, and all that fun stuff. So. Didn't have all my equipment, I'll say. I had my computer, but I didn't have all my equipment. And couldn't, and it was just hard, really, pulling away time to get all of it up and running. But totally slipped my mind. It was around the twentieth when I was like, "Oh man, the fifteenth has passed. <laughs> what have I done?" After I after think- all the effort to get together at the last, you know, last minute, the eleventh <laughs> hour, and then I just I just <laughs> forgot to execute. Just totally you know, forgot. It happens to the best of us. I think uh, it it still turned out. We got the episode out there, and Connor's you know, discussion was phenomenal on threat assessment. I think, um, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot. Uh, Connor and I have talked about this a lot. Connor and I got to uh, get to know each other because we're both on um, uh, a subject matter expert team that IHSS put together for a workplace violence curriculum. And I thought I knew a lot about threat assessment. I really did. And then I met Connor and realized that I don't know Jack about threat assessment. (laughs) And, uh, and so just, he just, you know, the depth of knowledge that he brings um, in that field and in that, in that, you know, specific area and threat assessment was phenomenal in, in having that discussion. And so I'm hoping uh, that we get to do more discussion about threat assessment as we move forward, because, man, he opened a lot of doors as we talked about different aspects of that and, and the need for threat assessment in our industry, um, whether, whether or not the episode got out on time. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> now you know you, you raise a great point there and just talking about you know where we want to go with these conversations sure so so you know we've we've had some discussion around that but we would like to get some feedback as well so just really talking in terms of the podcast itself uh, you, you know even though there's something that we release monthly we've had over three thousand downloads we've been in close to downloaded in close to 50 countries so first of all i just want to say for you listening thank you for listening thank you for engaging with the content and you know really really giving us a reason to to keep coming back and keep doing what we're doing again it's it's much appreciated uh, that you you take time out of your day to you know to, to listen to the information that we're sharing but we would like to get your feedback as well we want to know what you want to hear about and in the in the description no matter where it is that you're listening to this in the description there'll be a link where you can actually just submit feedback as to you know what you want to hear about in future episodes so just uh, just look for that link. It's just a, a couple of quick check boxes and a and a um, and an optional field where you can enter some information. But we'd be happy to hear what you want to hear about because we want to make sure that the information that we're sharing is relevant and it's going to be helpful for you in in your workplace. Yeah, absolutely. And I I'll, I'll echo what you said there, Brian. Man, it you know over three thousand people have listened to the podcast or, or downloaded the podcast. You know, almost fifty countries. Um, that's just phenomenal. To, to consider that anybody would listen to us like that. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> shocking revelation. Um, but uh, truly exciting. I, I also would extend just a tremendous thanks to the guests that we've had this last year. 
uh, and their willingness to participate with us, uh, given the fact that we have very, very little track record in producing a podcast like this on workplace violence. And uh, they were willing to jump in with both feet and, and support us and participate in that. And I'm excited about that and grateful. Um, but yeah, you know, what do we continue to talk about next? I mean, workplace violence is only continuing to rise. It's still an issue that continues to plague healthcare specifically. Um, but if you look at, you know, levels of violence and criminality uh, outside of the healthcare environment, it's on the rise as well, especially in our, in our you know, quote unquote, uh, post-pandemic world, which is continuing to take shape as not quite post-pandemic world. But uh, as, we, as we see these issues of, you know, violence on the increase, inside and outside the healthcare environment, the, you know, work that we do to try to prevent and mitigate that violence to make us or to help us become truly proactive uh, is only continuing to um, become more and more important. And so I'm interested to know, you know, what people are talking about, what they're doing. If you've got an idea for the podcast, share it with us. If you know somebody we should talk to, tell us that too. It'd be great to, uh, I, I, you know, I'd love to see every episode us have a guest next year to highlight a specific aspect of workplace violence prevention that's going to be helpful or meaningful to someone. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I look forward to continuing the conversations because if nothing else, it's a great excuse for me to hang out with Brian for, you know, 30, 40 minutes, at least once a month. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <And> I, <laughs> I have to like have to say the same thing. And I know we have the, we have the IHSS conference coming up in November and, you know, assuming that the world doesn't fall off a cliff before then, you know, we'll, we'll actually be able to meet in person, which I'm very much looking forward to because yeah, people, people may not realize this. Mike and I haven't actually met in person. We've been, we've done all of this all online, <laughs> all online. It's a beautiful relationship that's developed, uh, across the interwebs. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that is going to be exciting. That's coming up around the corner. We'll be uh, we'll be going to the the IHSS ACNE and uh, having a chance to meet. And um, I'm sure we'll get to uh, get some feedback from folks at the uh, conference as well. Uh, if you're listening and you're going to be at the ACNE, let us know. I'd love to see you. Uh, grab a drink one evening. Grab some coffee one morning. Let us know. It'd be great to talk to you and uh, and get to know more people. Absolutely. Yeah, but in the uh, in the interim, until we get some more feedback um, and see what uh, people are interested in, we're going to continue to pursue uh, discussions on things like threat assessment and protective intelligence and de-escalation techniques and uh, all the various aspects of workplace violence prevention in the hopes that we can continue to bring uh, all of our listeners uh, some insight into opportunities to be proactive about uh, violence prevention, especially in the healthcare environment. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to highlight, you know, things that, you know, IAHSS is doing uh, in regards to workplace violence curriculum and uh, things that other organizations are doing. I know there's other partnerships out there and, and organizations that we can pursue like the Emergency Nursing Association. And so hopefully there'll be some opportunities there, but we're going to continue to pursue that content. And uh, we hope that you continue to get something out of it. And uh, come back to listen to Brian and I wax philosophical about uh, proactive security. Uh, now, again, thank you for listening to us and, and engaging with us for the last year. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, and I'll say thank you in advance for continuing to support the proactive security podcast and, and really just sharing your, your feedback and your insights with us as well. Absolutely. Now until October, when we're back, we'll just encourage you to remain proactive. Take care.